All right, let's go to number 28, Auburn. Brian Harson's first uh, first year head coach. Uh, 18 commits for Auburn. Uh, four of them are ESPN 300 commits, 11 three stars and six four stars. Um, so kind of this first class of the Brian Harson era has got a lot of defense in it. Um, three out of the four uh, ESPN 300 commits are defensive. Uh, you have defensive tackles, Lee Hunter and Marquise Robinson. And then uh, we got a, a fast four-star cornerback, uh, Tavarsh uh, Dawson. <clears throat> uh, ESPN 300 quarterback and previous Virginia Tech verbal commit, uh, Demetrius Davis. He's the number four dual threat quarterback. Uh, he headlines the offensive side of the ball. So um, interesting, uh, interesting game plan there with the, the dual threat quarterback, maybe uh, shades That's of so uh, I know, right. Shades of headed back towards like a, maybe a Cam Newton style um, offense. Uh, we got Except for this, this time they recruited their this, quarterback. This stop, stop. So much. <laughs> Um, they had four-star wide receiver Hal Presley. Uh, he's coming from Texas. Um, and then I love how they word stuff. He comes with a college-ready body and strong hands. Like, what does that even mean? Okay. Ew, so, um, that just sounds weird. That makes sense. I know. Sense. I don't like I that. I know. Like, come on, ESPN. I don't know. Uh, mean adult. Mean adult. Anyway, they, all, uh, they also get the number one outside linebacker from the JUCO top 50 in Joko Willis. So um, that's, a, that's, that's cool as well. So um, – who did I start with first last time? I started with you, Matt, right? Didn't I? Yeah, because we yeah. were yeah. talking about Coach Drew. Matt got us off the rails with realists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. It was interesting. <laughs> it was a fun little, fun little tidbit in the recruiting. I days. know. Everyone's going to be like on their phones Googling. Like. <laughs> Jesse, I know you you love to talk about Auburn. Uh, so let's start with you. And um, I, I, interesting, as, uh, as, as we were talking about that, do you think um, – is there like pressure on Bo Nix after a very subpar – uh sophomore season after we thought he was you know so great as a freshman yes do you think there's pressure yes on i i think i think there is um they're doing a sweeps with the Bo nick show they are looking at the ratings they're trying to see who all is watching and a lot of people are watching um i think again too it's it's a new coach coming in so there's already pressure right like right. you're not his guy and you need to prove that you're his guy but just in case you aren't, he's recruited a dual threat guy that he thinks can get the job done. Now, it's going to be very hard to start as a true freshman. But wait, Bo Nix did it, so maybe this kid will. So I, if I'm Bo Nix, I'm a little worried. I'd never say it out loud, but I'm a little worried. I'm going to be in coach's office. We're going to be watching film together to make sure that my position is solidified. Um, but overall, Auburn did better than I anticipated they would. I didn't think they'd be in the bottom. Like, they were definitely going to be better than Carolina and Vandy and all that. But um, just given their very shaky season um, and, and just how things were left, and I don't know, maybe it's just the Bama fan in me, but I didn't anticipate them getting as, as many um, four stars as they did. So I think that's good. Um, but, again, I think all of that is just all the eyes are on the quarterback right now. Um, there was mm -hmm. so much hype around Bo Nix and it's like you mentioned, maybe that, that kid is a, uh, kind of a Cam Newton style. So we'll see, um, Bo Nix start practicing. Would you guys consider Bo Nix a dual threat? I mean, I know a lot of times his first instinct is mm -hmm. kind of to run and we even talked about that this year, but would you consider him a dual threat I, quarterback? I wouldn't because I don't think he's very like proficient at it. Yeah. You put a little bit of pressure on him and he is just like, uh, and he's yeah, that's true. Thrown. I feel like it, there was a lot of scrambling done, but I don't feel like there was that dual threat. I'm going to, you know, bust a, a 30 yard run on you. I think if you're a dual threat and maybe it's just me, I think there's a level of composure that comes with being a dual threat quarterback. Obviously there's composure at the position anyways, but if you're able to do both, if you're able yeah. to kind of switch, scramble and go, and you're able to actually execute you have to have composure and execution a lot of times you can still you know compose yourself and get a play done but the execution isn't as perfect as it is with a dual threat I don't think his execution or composure are that of a dual threat quarterback yeah Matt what are your thoughts on uh, not only that but just this class as a whole 
Well, I, Auburn's one of those places they always seem to recruit well. And, you know, with a little bit of coaching turnover, it doesn't seem like they've they've lost a lot. I mean, you're picking up a bunch of kids. I mean, four, four people from – or four uh, – yeah, four recruits from Alabama, four from Alabama, three from Texas. So they're poaching the right states. Um, I am kind of interested about this uh, Demetrius Davis kid because I'm just was looking at a couple of different things. Uh, apparently, he's got three state championships uh, from when he was in high school. Ooh. Very good pocket pro- – uh, sorry, very good passing production, according to what I'm reading. Solid ru- rushing numbers. Um, apparently, the kid's a player. So – if he can stay healthy, if he can make good decisions, if he can develop, um, then maybe he can be the starter uh, sooner rather than later. But a lot of that's going to have to do with Harson and how well he develops him. Um, sure. So it's just going to all come down to how well that gets developed because the kid can be a five-star coming out of high school, but if you don't do anything with him, then it's a moot point. Right. Cow's opinion. Sure. Interesting to note here. So a lot of defense and, and remember – Remember who's at defense now, Derek Mason. Um, That's right. And, I forgot. That. And so, I mean, I, I think this is going to be a really tough defensive Auburn team. And if they have that coupled with maybe this new guy works out, you know, at, at quarterback or, or maybe Bo Nix steps up, I don't want to say I don't want to say it, but Auburn, you know, they have potential. Um, and granted, we don't even know that they much. They always about... have potential because they sold their soul. <laughs> well, no, so they, they're the one team that pulls off random stuff, and everybody knows that whatever reason you believe that is, is so. I say sell their souls and sacrifice sweater vest. Sweater whatever vest is gone why, now. I know. So, ooh, <laughs> so what is it? What's it going to be? I don't know. <laughs> interesting maybe they're just Derek Mason's like it's okay we can sacrifice protein shakes I'll <laughs> I'll help you we'll pour one out oh, <laughs> we'll pour it. one out pour it. one out for Gus there you go oh man Sorry. yeah we'll see I, <laughs> I, I think um, oh man we can't make fun of the sweater vest stuff anymore can we, we can't I don't know what I'm gonna do Arthur Gustavo know. Malzahn the third all that stuff is just gone well, oh. we can still make fun of it when he's playing for the national championship at Central Florida next year. I love, so, I love that it'll, it'll be that fun. meme. Be you know, ironically, this is Gus's fault. <laughs> this is Gus's fault. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. <laughs>